Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be covering complete unit 3 that is classification in data mining. I will explain each and every topic in detail. Guys, I have uploaded complete data mining subject tutorials. I will provide link in description. You can watch from there. Let's get started. At first, I will explain what is classification. Classification is nothing but arranging the data into various categories. We not only use classification in data mining, but also in real life. For example, I want to purchase a dress in a mall. In a mall, dresses are arranged in various categories, like sheds in boy section are arranged in one side, and dresses in girl section are arranged in another side, and kids section one side, and so on so that I can easily find out my required rest, so that searching becomes easier and I can save my time. Similarly, in data mining also, we classify data into various categories, so that searching data becomes easier. A classification technique is a systematic approach to build classification models from an input data set. By using classification technique, we can build classification models. We can create classification models by using classification technique. How we create this classification models? By using input data set, we create classification models. And this classification model is used to identify class label. I will give one example so that you can clearly understand this definition. There are two steps in classification. First step is model construction and second step is model usage. I took one input data set. That input data set contains three attributes. They are student, marks and result. In any input data set, we call last attribute as class. In this last attribute is result. So I call this result as class. And whatever the data that is present inside this class, we call this data as class label. How many class labels are present inside this class? There are two class labels present inside this class. They are fail and pass. Fail and pass. These are the two class labels. Now we need to send this input data set into this classification algorithm so that classification algorithm will create classification model. We also call this classification model as classifier. Basically this classifier contains some rules. Whenever we send this data set into this classification algorithm, classification algorithm will learn this data set first. How it will learn this data set? It will check each and every object that is student A got 5 marks so his result is fail. Student B got 6 marks so his result is pass. Next student C got 2 marks so his result is fail. Student D got 7 marks so his result is pass. And at last student E. Student E got 9 marks so his result is pass. After learning this classification algorithm will analyze. What it will analyze? Okay, student who got more than 5 marks were passed and student who got 5 marks or less than 5 marks got failed. After analyzing, this classification algorithm will create model for this. This model contain rules. Rule is nothing but if marks is less than or equal to 5, then result equal to fail. Else result is equal to pass. We call this model as classification model or all we can also call this model as classifier. This is how we constructed model. This is first step that is model construction. We call this input data set as training data set because we are training this classification algorithm in order to generate model. So we call this input data set as training data set. After model construction, next step is model usage. How we will use this model now? For example, I want to know result of one student. That student name is F. He got one mark. I want to know his result. Whenever I send this information into this classification model, this classification model will check the rule. What is the rule? If marks are less than or equal to 5, then result is equal to fail. Else, result is equal to pass. Here, student F got one mark. One is less than 5. So, result is fail. It will display result as fail. For example, there is another student. The student name is H. He got 8 marks. I want to know his result. Whenever I send this information into this classifier, this classifier will check. That is, student got 8 marks. 8 is not less than or equal to 5. 8 is greater than 5. So, result is pass. Classification technique is a systematic approach to build classification model from an input data set. We are building this classification model by using this input data set that is used to identify class label. Fail and pass. These are the class label. By using this, we can find class label. This input data set is known as training data set. I already said before. This classification algorithm will learn from this input data set. So we call this as training data set. In classification, 
we arrange new data with the help of current or past data we are finding this new result with the help of past result and whatever the data that is given to this model based on the rule it will generate class label class label is nothing but result some of the classification algorithms are decision tree neural networks etc next topic is prediction prediction is a process of identifying missing or unavailable numeric data for a new object whereas in classification we are finding class label that is nothing but true or false or pass or fail yes or no like that these all are known as class labels we are finding this but whereas in prediction we are finding missing values or unavailable numeric data for example if person want to purchase computer whether he will purchase computer or not that is either yes or no is known as classification we are finding class label that is yes or no it is known as classification but how much cost that person is going to spend in order to purchase this computer this is known as prediction because we are predicting the cost don't know what is the cost so cost is missing value we are finding this this is known as prediction algorithm which use training data set to derive a model that is predictor in classification whatever the input data set that is used in order to create model we call this model as classification model or classifier but in prediction we call this model as predictor because it is predicting the value and whatever the new data that is given to this predictor it should find a numeric output unlike in classification this model does not have any class label i already said in this example prediction contain class label that is either yes or no true or false like that but prediction do not contains any class label and this model predicts continuous valued function or ordered value next topic is bayesian belief network the term bayesian denotes statistical method in statistical method we represent complex data in simple format and is based on bayes theorem this bayesian belief network provides a simple way of applying bayes theorem to complex problem in bayesian belief network we apply bayes theorem to complex problems before explaining definition i will explain phases of bayesian belief network totally there are two phases in bayesian belief network they are first one is directed acyclic graph shortly we call it as dag and next one is conditional probability table we call it as cpt at first i will explain what is directed acyclic graph that is dag directed graph mean graph which contain directions that is nothing but graph which contain arrow marks is known as directed graph and acyclic mean graph which do not contains any cycle for example this is cyclic graph total there are three nodes that is node a node b and node c node a is directed to node b and node b is directed to node c and node c is directed to node a and again node a is directed to node b that mean graph is repeating again and again there is no end for this so it is known as cyclic graph but acyclic mean graph which do not form any cycle for example node a is passing to node b and node b is passing to node c in this there is no cycle so it is known as acyclic graph this is directed acyclic graph because this graph do not contains any cycle and it is directed now i am taking an example of lung cancer total there are two possibilities of getting lung cancer they are first one is family history and next one is smoker and person those who smoke they can also get another disease like emphysema emphysema is also one of the disease person those who get lung cancer they will get positive x-ray and they will get breathing problem so i am connecting this lung cancer to positive x-ray and breathing problem and person those who suffer from emphysema they will not get positive x-ray but they will get breathing problem so i am connecting this emphysema to breathing problem here each node of network is either random variable or attribute that means whatever the data that is present inside this node we call this data as variable for example here lung cancer is variable here family history is variable smoker smoker is variable we can also call this smoker as attribute attribute mean character attribute represent character of a person smoker is character so we can also call this variable as attribute and arrow mark shows relationship between variables or attributes for example if you consider this variable that is breathing problem person with lung cancer will get breathing problem and person with emphysema disease also will get breathing problem so parents of this breathing problem are first one is lung cancer and next one is emphysema these both are parents to this breathing problem for example if you consider variable that is lung cancer lung cancer depends on family history and smoker 
so parent variable of this lung cancer are family history and smoker this both are parents to this lung cancer call dependent variables as parent variables now i want to find probability of getting lung cancer we can find probability of particular variable by using conditional probability table this is conditional probability table of lung cancer where lc represent lung cancer and negation lc represent not getting lung cancer and lung cancer depends on two variables they are family history and smoker so we consider both family history and smoker as parent variables so we need to take only parent variables so what are possibilities here first one is family history and smoker next one is family history and non smoker and third one is no family history and smoker and last one is no family history and non smoker these are four possibilities for example if a person is having both family history and smoking habit then out of 10% there is 8% of chance to get lung cancer and remaining 2% chance of not getting lung cancer if a person is having family history but he don't have smoking habit then out of 10% he has 5% chance to get lung cancer and remaining 5% chance of not getting lung cancer person don't have family history but he has habit of smoking then out of 10% he has 7% chance to get lung cancer and remaining 3% chance of not getting lung cancer person don't have family history and as well as smoking habit then out of 10% he has only 1% chance to get lung cancer and remaining 9% chance of not getting lung cancer this is conditional probability table by using this conditional probability table we can represent conditional probability of variable now i will explain definition of bayesian belief network bayesian belief network is a probabilistic graphical model that represents set of variables and their conditional dependencies through a directed acyclic graph bayesian belief network is a probabilistic graphical model that mean graph Graphical model mean we use graph that is directed a cyclic graph and it is used to find probability. So it is probabilistic graphical model that represents a set of variables and their conditional dependencies through a directed a cyclic graph. That means by using directed a cyclic graph, this Bayesian belief network will show relationship between variables. That is how one variable is dependent on another variable based on the condition. I already explained this in this example. This is mathematical formula of Bayesian belief network. In order to find probabilities in Bayesian belief network, we use this formula. Meaning of this formula is probability of attribute is equal to probability of that particular attribute by its parent attribute this is meaning of this formula we use this formula in order to calculate joint distribution i will explain joint distribution problem with an example this is bayesian belief network as we know bayesian belief network contains directed acyclic graph and conditional probability table this is directed acyclic graph meaning of this graph is whenever robbery or earthquake occurs this alarm will ring when alarm rings john and mary calls to police this is meaning of this graph now we need to write conditional probability table for each and every variable this conditional probability table will provide information about how much chance is there that particular event will occur or will not occur it will provide information about that if we consider this variable that is robbery how much chance is there that robbery will occur and robbery will not occur there is one percent chance that robbery will occur and there is 99 percent chance that robbery will not occur and similarly earthquake there is two percent chance that earthquake will occur and remaining 98 percent chance that earthquake will not occur next we need to write probability table for this alarm we need to write conditional probability table based on the variable and its parent variables what are parent variables for this alarm robbery and earthquake these two are parents there are two chances for alarm that is alarm will ring and alarm will not ring and there are four chances that is robbery will occur and earthquake will occur robbery will occur but earthquake will not occur and robbery will not occur but earthquake will occur and robbery and earthquake will not occur these are the four chances when robbery and as well as earthquake occurs then there is 95 percent chance that alarm will ring and rest of the five percent chance that alarm will not ring similarly robbery will occur but earthquake will not occur in this case there is 94 percent chance that alarm will ring and there is six percent chance that alarm will not ring and when robbery will not occur but earthquake will occur in this situation there is 29 percent chance that alarm will ring and 75 71 percent chance that alarm will not ring and when robbery will not occur and earthquake will not occur in that situation there is one percent chance that alarm will ring because 
there is no robbery and no earthquake so in that situation there is only one percent chance that alarm will ring 91 percent chance that alarm will not ring this is conditional probability table for alarm guys you should remember one important thing that is you need to write probability of particular variable by comparing it with parent variable here parent of alarm are robbery and earthquake so in this table i took robbery and earthquake robbery and earthquake do not have any parent variable so i directly written table now i am writing conditional probability for john calls parent of john calls is alarm so here i took alarm variation stands for alarm whenever alarm rings there is 90 percent chance that john will call to police and there is 10 percent chance that john will not call and whenever alarm do not rings there is five percent chance that john will call to police and rest of the 95 percent chance that john will not call to police next i written conditional probability table for mary calls parent of mary is alarm so i written alarm here very stands for alarm whenever alarm rings there is 70 percent chance that mary will call to police and rest of the 30 percent chance that mary will not call to the police and whenever alarm do not ring in that situation there is one percent chance that mary will call to police and 99 percent chance that mary will not call to police this is conditional probability tables for each and every variable. In order to calculate joint distribution, we need to have conditional probabilities. We already written conditional probabilities by using conditional probability table. Joint distribution is nothing but we need to calculate probabilities for multiple events. Here we need to calculate probability for John calls, Mary calls, alarm rings and robbery not occurred and earthquake not occurred. For this, we need to calculate probability by using this formula. Formula is, formula is probability of variable is equal to probability of that variable by its parent variable. Now, I am calculating probability of John calls by using this formula. That is, probability of John calls is equal to probability of John calls by its parent. Who is parent of John calls? That is alarm. But here, what should I write? alarm rings or alarm do not rings which one i need to consider i need to consider alarm rings because in question they given alarm will ring so here i need to consider alarm rings that is a into probability of mary probability of mary is equal to probability of mary by its parent who is parent of mary alarm here also we need to consider alarm rings because in question they given alarm will ring so i written a here that is alarm will ring and probability of a that is probability of a by its parent who is parents of a that is robbery and earthquake but in out of this four which one i need to consider i need to consider robbery will not occur and earthquake will not occur because in question they will they given that robbery will not occur and earthquake will not occur so i need to consider this that is robbery will not occur and earthquake will not occur and at last probability of robbery will not occur that is directly we need to write because there is no parents for this robbery into probability of earthquake not occur because there is no parents for earthquake also what is probability of john calls and alarm rings that is j a is 90 into probability of m by a that is mary calls and alarm is 70 into probability of alarm rings and robbery do not occur and earthquake not occur for this probability is 1 into probability of robbery do not occur and that is 99 into probability of earthquake not occurred that is 98 we need to multiply all this after multiplying all these values we will get result as 56 comma 133 comma 000 this is final result next topic is k nearest neighbor algorithm shortly we call it as knn algorithm k nearest neighbor is one of the simplest machine learning algorithm based on supervised learning technique this knn is machine learning algorithm and this knn is based on supervised learning technique supervised learning technique means in supervised learning technique we train machines by using labeled data labeled data means data which contains input and output for example if you consider classification in classification we are training this classification algorithm by using label data label data is nothing but data which contains both input and output for example in this student and marks are considered as input and whereas result is considered as output so this is label data by using this labeled data we are training this algorithm so classification is also a supervised learning technique so knn is supervised learning technique that means we train machines by using label data knn algorithm assumes the similarity between new data and available data and then put the new data into a category that is more similar to available category i will give one example so that you can clearly understand this definition for example i have one input data input data is nothing but it is new data this is available data 
total there are two categories of data available with me one is square category and another one is circle category now i want to place this input data that is new data in any of these categories how i will place by using knn classifier we can place this input data in any of this available category but how it will place it will place based on the similarity for example this input data is similar to square because it is looking like square so this input data is similar to square category so knn classifier will place this input data in square category so output is this data belongs to square category i hope you have understood what is knn algorithm knn algorithm assumes the similarity between new data and available data and then put the new data in the category which is similar to the available category i hope you have understood this definition for example i have an image that looks similar to square and circle but i want to know either this image belongs to square or circle in order to identify that i use knn classifier and this knn algorithm works based on the similarity measures that is knn algorithm will find similar features between this new data with respect to square and circle and based on the most similarity features it will be placed this new data will be placed either in square or circle so this input data is much similar to square so it is placed in square category and this knn algorithm can be used for regression and as well as for classification but mostly we use this knn algorithm for classification so we can also call this knn algorithm as knn classifier we also call this knn algorithm as lazy learner algorithm the name itself says it is lazy in learning we call this knn algorithm as lazy learner algorithm because whatever the training data set that we give to this knn algorithm knn algorithm will not learn the training data set instead what it will do is it will store the training data set and then at the time of classification it performs some actions on that data set. this is an example of how knn algorithm will work total there are two categories of data available with me one is category a and another one is category b category a contains square data that is all the data is in square form and whereas category b contains circle data circular data all the data is in circular form there is new data available with me i want to place this new data either in category a or in category b by using knn algorithm what knn algorithm will do is at first knn algorithm will find some nearest neighbors what are the objects near to this new data that is square two squares and one circle is near to this new data among these three nearest neighbors two are square and one is circle so majority is square because there are two squares and whereas only one circle so we will place this new data based on majority so majority is square now so we will place this new data in this category a we will place new data based on the nearest neighbors so we call this as k nearest neighbor algorithm after placing this new object in this category a this is how output looks like we placed this new object in category a these are the steps how knn will work this is knn algorithm at first i will explain knn example we will solve one problem and then we will go for algorithm so that you can easily remember this algorithm this is an example which we need to solve perform knn classification algorithm on following data set and predict the class for mass is equal to 6 and computer is equal to 8 where k equal to 3 here given table contains three attributes they are marks of mathematics marks of computers and result these are the three attributes given now we need to find class class is nothing but last attribute is known as class here we need to find result for mass is equal to 6 marks and computer is equal to 8 marks here we need to find result for this here they given k equal to 3 k equal to 3 mean we need to consider three nearest neighbors in order to find result in order to find nearest neighbors we use this formula that is euclidean distance formula of euclidean distance is under root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square we need to find euclidean distance for all this data for example these are the marks of students for example this data one is marks of student one student one got four marks in mass three marks in computers and his result is failed similarly student two i'm considering student two as data two student three as data three student 4 as data 4 and atlas student 5 as data 5 these are the marks that students got now i am calculating distance for this d1 data 1 this is euclidean distance formula that is under root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square here x2 and y2 are these values which is given in question which we need to find result this is x2 mass equal to 6 where 6 is x2 and 
height is y2 and similarly with respect to data 1 here x1 is 4 and y1 is 3 now we need to substitute these values in this formula that is under root of x2 is 6 6 minus x1 is 4 6 minus 4 whole square plus y2 is 8 8 minus 3 whole square so result is under root of 2 square plus 5 square that is under root of 4 plus 25 equal to under root 29 if you calculate this under root 29 you will get this value that is 5.38 we found distance for d1 similarly we need to find euclidean distance for d2 d3 d4 and d5 here in d2 x1 is 6 and y1 is 7 6 and 7 and whereas x2 and y2 is same for all this that is x2 is 6 and y2 is 8 after substituting these values in this formula i will get result as 1 similarly for d, d3 result is 1 and for d4 result is 3.16 and for d5 result is 2 here in question they given k equal to 3 that means we need to consider 3 nearest neighbors that is we need to consider 3 smallest values from this data 1 data 2 data 3 data 4 and data 5 from this from all this data we need to consider 3 smallest values here d1 is 5 5.3 d2 is 1 d3 is 1 d4 is 3 and whereas d5 is 2 out of this d2 is first smallest value after that d3 is smallest after that d5 is smallest these are the three smallest values i considered because here in question they given k equal to 3 so we need to consider three smallest values here i considered d2 and d3 and d5 here d2 is nothing but person 2 person 2 got six marks in mass and seven marks in computers and his result is pass and similarly d3 person 3 got 7 marks in mass and 8 marks in computers and his result is pass and similarly d5 d5 got 8 marks in mass and 8 marks in computers and his result is pass majority of the result is pass so for this new data for this new new student who got 6 marks in mass and 8 marks in computers his result is pass so for mass is equal to 6 and for com computers is equal to 8 result is pass this is final result of the new data we need to consider result based on the majority here majority of the student got pass marks so here for new data result is pass for example here for student 2 result is fail even though result is fail we need to consider majority one fail two pass so we need to consider pass for example all these three student result is fail so in that situation we need to consider majority all are fail so result is fail for new data also result is fail i hope you have understood guys if you get this k in algorithm question in exam definitely you need to write this example otherwise you will not get marks so definitely write this example in examination based on these three nearest neighbors we decided result of new data now i will explain k in an algorithm in step one we will select k number of neighbors and after selecting k number of neighbors we need to calculate Euclidean distance for this neighbor here we selected k neighbors and we calculated Euclidean distance for this neighbors after that in step 3 we need to select nearest neighbors based on the condition if they given k equal to 3 then we need to select 3 nearest neighbors if they given k equal to 2 then we need to select 2 nearest neighbors based on the condition we need to select nearest neighbors as per Euclidean distance and in step 5 we need to assign our new data to any of the category based on the majority and at last in step 6 our model is ready in step 5 we assigned value based on the majority here majority is pass so i so i send value as pass and at last in step 6 our model is ready this is knn algorithm next topic is nav based classifier algorithm nav based algorithm is a supervised learning algorithm supervised learning algorithm in algorithm which uses labeled data to train machines labeled data mean data which contains both input and as well as output and nav based classifier algorithm is based on base theorem and user for solving classification problems the name itself says nav based classifier algorithm that means this algorithm uses base theorem in order to solve classification problems this algorithm will solve classification problems but mainly it is used to solve text classification problems which contains high dimensional training data set and nav based classifier is one of the simple and most efficient classification algorithm most efficient mean which will give correct output by using this algorithm we can build fast machine learning models which will make quick predictions we can call this nav based classifier as probabilistic classifier because it can 
can predict probability of an object. These are the two advantages of Navi-based classifier. One is it is fast and easy machine learning algorithm. This is one of the advantage. It is fast and as well as easy machine learning algorithm to predict class of a data set. Class is nothing but it can predict output easily. And second advantage is if you want to solve text based classification problems, then this algorithm is best choice. This is second advantage. But how can we solve this Navi based classifier problems? That is by using Bayes theorem. By using Bayes theorem, we can solve Navi based classifier problems. This is formula of Bayes theorem. That is probability of A by B is equal to probability of B by A into probability of A by probability of B. What is meaning of this probability of A by B? A by B mean probability of A when B is true. Probability of B by A mean probability of b when a is we can solve this problem by using this formula i will explain one problem this is a problem which we need to solve now here they given table in table there are total three types of fruits they are mango banana and orange total there are 65 mangoes out of 65 mangoes 35 mangoes are yellow in color 45 mangoes are sweet and zero long and similarly total there are 40 bananas out of 40 bananas 40 are yellow in color 30 are sweet and 35 are long. Similarly, total there are 15 oranges. Out of 15 oranges, 5 oranges are yellow in color and 10 oranges are sweet and 5 oranges are long. Total how many fruits are yellow in color? 35 plus 40 plus 5. Total 80. Similarly, how many fruits are sweet? 45 plus 30 plus 10 that is 85. And how many fruits are long? 35 plus 5 that is 40. Now we need to calculate total of all these fruits that is 65 mangoes plus 40 bananas plus 15 total 120 total there are 120 fruits out of 120 fruits 80 fruits are yellow in color and 85 fruits are sweet and 40 fruits are long this is table here in question they given one new fruit this fruit has following properties that is this fruit is yellow in color this fruit is sweet and as well as it is long now we need to find to which category this fruit belongs to either this fruit belongs to mango or this fruit belongs to banana or this fruit belongs to orange we need to find this by using nav base algorithm i need to find this for this i use base theorem formula this is base theorem formula that is probability of a by b is equal to probability of b by a into probability of a by probability of b this is main formula which we need to remember to solve this problem here in question they given three fruits they are mango banana and orange so we need to calculate probability for mango and probability for banana and probability for orange at first i am calculating probability for mango let this new fruit be x i am considering this new fruit as x so here probability of x by mango is equal to probability of yellow by mango into probability of here there are three properties now yellow sweet long so here probability of yellow by mango into probability of sweet by mango into probability of what is third property that is long probability of long by mango now i am applying base theorem formula for this three first i am applying base theorem for this probability of yellow by mango what is base theorem formula that is probability of a by b is equal to probability of b by a into probability a by probability b that is probability of yellow by mango is equal to probability of mango by yellow into probability of yellow by probability of mango similarly now i am applying base theorem for this probability of sweet by mango formula is probability of mango by sweet into probability of sweet by probability of mango again we need to apply base theorem formula for this probability of long by mango probability of long by mango is equal to probability of mango by long long into probability of long by probability of mango i applied base theorem formula for this three now we need to write values for this what is value of probability of mango by yellow by seeing this table what is probability of mango when yellow is true probability of mango is 35 35 by what is probability of yellow 80 into what is probability of yellow probability of yellow is 80 and total is 120 so here 80 by 120 whenever we get this like this probability of yellow then we need to write probability of yellow by total total is 120 no so i written 80 by 120 by what is probability of mango probability of mango is 65 how many mangoes are the total 65 no 
so 65 by 120 into next probability of mango by sweet that is 45 by 85 45 by 85 into what is probability of sweet that is total how many fruits are sweet 85 that is 85 by 120 and probability of mango we already calculated probability of mango here that is 65 by 120 into next probability of mango by long that is 0 by 40 0 by 40 into what is probability of long that is 40 by 120 by what is probability of mango i already calculated here probability of mango is 65 by 120 65 by 120 that is equal to 35 by 80 into 80 by 120 into we need to bring this up that is 120 by 65 here 120 120 cancel 80 80 cancel into 45 by 85 into 85 by 120 we need to bring this up that is 120 by 65 here 85 85 cancel 120 120 cancel to 0 by 40 into 40 by 120 into we need to bring this up that is 120 by 65 here 120 120 cancel 40 40 cancel that is equal to 35 by 65 into 45 by 65 into 0 by 65 anything into 0 is 0 so here value is 0 here probability of mango is 0 similarly we need to calculate probability for banana and orange here i calculated probability for banana probability of x by banana is equal to probability of illa by banana into probability of sweet by banana into probability of long by banana apply base theorem formula for this three that is probability of illa by banana is equal to probability of banana by yellow into probability of illa by probability of banana we need to apply base theorem formula for this three after that we need to substitute values that is probability of banana by probability of yellow what is value of probability of banana that is 40 by 80 here probability of banana is 40 probability of yellow is 80 total there are 80 yellow fruits so 80 that is 40 by 80 into what is probability of yellow that is 80 total 80 yellow fruits out of 120 fruits so here 80 by 120 by probability of banana total there are 40 banana fruits out of 120 so here 40 by 120 similarly i written values for these two so 40 by 80 into 80 by 120 we need to bring this up that is 120 by 40 when we bring this up it will become 120 by 40 80 80 cancel 120 120 cancel 40 40 cancel similarly here 85 85 cancel 120 120 cancel it will become 30 by 40 and here 40 40 cancel 120 120 cancel 1 into 30 by 40 into 35 by 40 if we calculate this in calcium we will get value like this 0.65 this is value of banana 0.65 now we need to find probability for orange probability of x by orange is equal to probability of yellow by orange into probability of sweet by orange into probability of long by orange after applying base theorem and substituting values we will get probability of orange as we will get probability of orange as 0.07 this is probability of orange we got probability of banana as 0.65 and probability of mango as 0 and probability of orange is 0.07 among these three fruits which fruit has highest probability that is probability of banana has highest probability that is 0.65 this is highest so this fruit belongs to banana this is output that is this new fruit with yellow sweet and long property belongs to banana guys if base classification methods question comes in exam then you need to write this base theorem formula and then you need to write this nav base classifier answer that's it because base classification methods are classified into two types one is base theorem and next one is nav base classifier next topic is decision tree we also call this decision tree as decision tree classifier or decision tree induction decision tree is supervised learning technique and by using this decision tree 
you can solve both classification problems and as well as regression problems the name itself says decision tree that means by using this tree we can take decisions this decision tree will represent classification model and regression model in the form of tree structure that means this decision tree is represented in the form of tree that is used to solve problem decision tree contains three types of nodes they are root node internal node and last one is leaf node for example this is decision tree in decision tree topmost node is known as root node and last nodes are called as leaf nodes and nodes which are in between this root node and leaf node is known as internal node for example this is table this table contains three attributes they are student marks and result in decision tree we can store attributes inside the node for example we can store attribute student this internal nodes represent test on attribute and whereas leaf node represent class label in this table last attribute is known as class and data which is in this class is known as class label there are two types of class labels in this table they are pass and fail so leaf node represent class label that means we can write class label in this pass and fail root node and internal nodes are represented by rectangle and whereas leaf node is represented by oval these are the advantages of using decision tree first advantage is it does not require any domain knowledge people those who don't have any domain knowledge can also use this decision tree this is first advantage and second advantage is classification steps of decision tree are simple and fast whatever the classification steps that this decision tree contains these steps are very simple and as well as fast and third advantage is missing values in data does not affect output though there are some missing values in data it does not affect the output of decision tree this decision tree is automatic and does not require any standardization of data standardization means checking whether the data is in correct format or not so this decision tree is automatic that means there is no need of checking that whether this data is in correct format or not these are the advantages of decision tree building a decision tree is all about discovering attributes that returns highest data gain building decision tree is nothing but finding attributes that provides highest information for example if you consider this data set this data set contains three attributes they are student marks and result decision tree is all about finding attributes that provides more useful information there are two key factors that we need to consider in order to select an attribute that provide more useful information the two key factors are first one is entropy and next one is information gain entropy refers to a common way to measure impurity in the decision tree it measures the impurity in data set by using entropy we can measure impurity in the data set next information gain information gain refers to the decline in entropy after data set is split it is also called as entropy reduction i will give an example so that you can clearly understand what is entropy and what is information gain for example this contains three attributes they are name gender and salary now i want to consider decision tree for person with highest salary and lowest salary so in that situation need only name attribute and salary attribute this gender attribute is not necessary for me so in that situation this gender attribute is considered as impure attribute so by using entropy we can find impure attribute after finding impure attribute this entropy will split this data set into two parts one part contains useful information whereas another part contains impure information this is how data set looks like after splitting after this what information gain will do is this information gain will select only useful attributes and it will decline this impure attribute so we can also call this information gain as entropy reduction this is an example of how to construct decision tree this is training data set by using this training data set we constructed this decision tree this training data set contains six attributes one two three four five six here last attribute is known as class and whatever the data that is present inside this class we call this as class label here s and no is class label nodes represent attribute and whereas edges represent values in attribute for example if you consider this here weather is attribute so inside this node i written weather and total there are three types of values present inside this attribute they are sunny cloudy and rainy so total i took three edges they are sunny cloudy and rainy this table says that based on the weather condition person will play game or not here total there are three types of weather conditions one is sunny next one is cloudy and third one is rainy if if weather condition is cloudy then person will play the game here also person will play the game yes and 
Yet last cloudy is here cloudy is repeated three times that is day two is cloudy day three is cloudy and day nine is cloudy in all these three cases here result is yes that is whenever weather condition is cloudy person will play the game so here directly i written weather cloudy as yes here output of weather condition cloudy is yes i am considering weather condition sunny total sunny is repeated three times that is day one day five and day 8 here whenever weather condition is sunny and humidity is high person will not play the game so result is no and whenever humidity is normal then person will play the game here in day 1 weather condition is sunny and humidity is high so here result is no and in day 5 weather condition is sunny and humidity is normal so if humidity is normal then person will play the game and in day 8 weather condition is sunny and humidity is high so person will not play the game so whenever weather condition is sunny and humidity is high result is no and whenever humidity is normal result is yes next weather condition is rainy here weather condition rainy repeated four times that is day 4 day 6 day 7 and day 10 whenever weather condition is rainy and wind is strong then play is no that means whenever weather condition is rainy and wind is strong person cannot play the game so result is no and whenever weather condition is rainy and wind is weak then person can play the game so result is yes these are the two situations weather condition cloudy does not depends on any other attributes but weather condition sunny depends on humidity and whereas weather condition rainy depends on wind this is how we constructed decision tree by using this training data set now i am creating decision rules based on this decision tree total there are five class labels that is total there are five outputs that is 1 2 3 4 5 so total i need to create five rules first rule is if weather condition is cloudy then then play is yes this is one rule and second rule is if weather condition is sunny and humidity is high then play is no this is another rule and if weather condition is sunny and humidity is normal then play is yes this is third rule and if weather condition is rainy and wind is strong then play is no this is fourth rule and if weather condition is rainy and wind wind is weak then play is yes this is fifth rule these are the five rules i created based on this decision tree by using decision tree we can create decision rules or by using this decision rules also we can create this decision tree now i given new input to this decision tree that is day 11 weather condition is cloudy and temperature is hot humidity is high and wind is weak now i want to find whether person will play game or not either yes or no i need to find whenever i give this input to this decision tree this decision tree will check rule that is weather condition is cloudy then result is yes so directly it will produce result as yes play is yes this is how output is generated next topic is support vector machine shortly we call it as svm support vector machine is one of the most popular supervised learning algorithm and by using svm we can solve both classification problems and as well as regression problems but mainly this svm is used to solve classification problems the main goal of svm algorithm is to create baseline this svm algorithm will create one baseline this baseline is known as hyperline what this hyperline will do is this hyperline will separate data into various classes so that whenever we receive new data we can place this new data in any of these classes this is an example in this example there are two categories of data with us one data is in circular form and whereas another data is in square form now i want to divide this data into two classes by using svm among this data the circle is last so svm will generate one line this line do not touch to this circle but with very short distance it will generate one line and similarly this square is very near to this circle so svm will generate one line from here this line do not touch to this square but with very small distance with very small gap svm will create one line and we need to generate one line in between these two lines with equal distance line which is close to this circle is known as negative hyperline and line which is close to this square is known as positive hyperline and line which is in between this negative hyperline and positive hyperline is known as the central line is known as hyperline this central line that is this hyperline will divide data into two classes one is class a and another one is class b whereas class a contains circles and class b contains squares and whatever data that is present inside this class a and class b we call this data as vectors 
we call all this data as vectors this circle is very close to this negative hyperline and this square is very close to this positive hyperline so we call this circle and this square as support vectors because they are very close to this negative hyperline and positive hyperline svm chooses the extreme points we also call this extreme points as extreme vectors that helps in creating hyperline from this graph this circle and this square we call this both as support vectors by using the support vectors we created one hyperline this hyperline will divide data into two classes that is class a and class b why we call this both circle and the square as support vectors because this both are close to each other based on this we created hyperline here dividing the data is based on the support vectors so we call this as support vector machine this is an example of how svm will work in this example there are two categories of data available with me one is circle and another one is square now i am training this model by giving this inputs that is by giving various kinds of circle images and various kinds of square images i am training this model whenever i give new data to this model then this model will compare this new data with circle and square and based on the similarities it will generate output in this new data looks like square so it will generate output as it is square in order to generate output this new data is compared with support vectors in this graph the circle and the square are support vectors new data is compared with this circle and the square and based on the similarities it will generate output support vector machines are classified into two types one is linear support vector machine and another one is non linear support vector machine in linear svm we can separate data into various classes by using straight line but whereas in non linear svm we cannot separate data into different classes by using straight line next topic is classification by back propagation back propagation is an algorithm that back propagates the errors from output node to input node therefore it is simply referred to as back propagation of errors this back propagation is nothing but back propagation of errors back propagation of errors is nothing but by using input we generate output but if we get any errors in the output we will send back this errors to the input so we call this as back propagation of errors and we use this back propagation in neural networks when body contains neurons this neurons will transfer signals to the brain for example whenever i see a car how can i recognize that it is a car i can recognize with the help of neurons whenever i see a car this neurons will transfer signals to the brain that it is a car we can call this neural network as artificial neural network artificial mean which is created by human being neural networks are computing systems with interconnected nodes that works like neurons in human brain if you consider this example this is simple neural network in neural network nodes are interconnected to each other and we call this starting nodes as input layer and ending nodes as output layer and nodes which are in between this input layer and output layer is known as hidden layer and nodes are interconnected to each other with some weights neural network uses supervised learning technique to generate output vectors from input vectors in a network this neural network is supervised learning technique in supervised learning technique we train our model by giving some sort of training data set this is neural network in this neural network from this input vectors output vectors are generated we call this nodes as vectors nodes are connected to each other with some weights we can give any random value for this weights and we need to perform some mathematical calculation between this input and weights in order to generate output for example here i want output as 1 this one is desired output which i want if i get output as 1 it is okay but if i get output as 0.5 or like that then it is considered as error here i got output as 0.5 but i want output as 1 so this 0.5 is considered as error whenever i get error i will send back this error to this input vector so that again we need to modify this weights in order to generate our desired output we should keep on modifying this weights in order to generate our desired output these are the advantages of back propagation first advantage is it is simple fast and easy to program this is first advantage second advantage is except input parameters no other parameters are required and third advantage is it is flexible and efficient it is flexible and efficient because no prior knowledge is required this is third advantage and fourth advantage is no need for users to learn any special function there is no need of learning any special functions in order to perform back propagation these are the four advantages of back propagation let's see disadvantages 
first disadvantage is noisy data leads to inaccurate results if there is any noisy data then results will be inaccurate second disadvantage is performance depends on input data and third disadvantage is in order to train neural networks we need to spend lot of time this is third disadvantage back propagation networks are classified into two types one is static back propagation and next one is recurrent back propagation at first let's see what is static back propagation in static back propagation we map static input for static output and this is used for solving static classification problems optical character recognition is one of the example of this static classification problems let's see what is recurrent back propagation recurrent back propagation network is used for fixed point learning and in recurrent back propagation activation is feed forwarded until we get fixed value difference between static back propagation and recurrent back propagation is in static back propagation mapping is immediate but whereas in recurrent back propagation mapping is not immediate i already said before back propagation contains input layer hidden layer and output layer input from unit i to unit j is denoted by xji and weights from unit i to unit j is denoted by wji i will give one example so that you can clearly understand what is this for example this is network in this network x1 and x2 are inputs now i am transferring this input from vector 1 to vector 4 so i can denote this as x41 comma w41 you should write in reverse manner that is from 4 to 1 where x41 is input and w41 is weights associated with this input similarly this x42 comma w42 where x is input and w is weight from vector 4 to vector 6 we can denote it as x64 comma w64 in this vector 1 and vector 2 are input layers vector 4 is hidden layer and vector 6 is output layer i think you got these two points next back propagation algorithm total there are six steps in back propagation algorithm in step 1 inputs are arrived through pre connected path in step 2 inputs are modeled with some weights and whereas in step 3 we need to calculate output of each neurons from input layer to hidden layer and from hidden layer to output layer in step 4 we need to calculate errors in output and in step 5 from output layer go back to hidden layer in order to adjust weights and reduce errors and in step 6 repeat the same process until desired output is achieved